So everyone's been saying how unnecessary this movie is, or how nobody asked for it, but nobody really asked for Blade Runner 2049, or nobody really needed a Finding Dory. Those movies turned out pretty good. Maybe this will turn out good too. Hi, I'm Danny Quinn, and welcome to another episode of First Impressions. On today's episode, we discover the roots of Han Solo in Solo, a Star Wars story. The movie tells the story of a young Han Solo, played by Alden Eichenreich, who ends up travelling with Woody Harrelson's Beckett and his crew of smugglers on an ambitious heist to steal a shipment of coaxium on the orders of gangster Dryden Voss, played by Paul Bettany. But things go wrong and Solo and Beckett are forced to find a way to make it up to Voss by assembling a crew consisting of Chewbacca and Solo's childhood friend Kira, played by Amelia Clark, along with Lando Calrissian, played by Donald Glover, and his companion L337, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, in order to carry out another perilous scheme to steal coaxium on the planet of Kessel. <sighs> you know, it's really surprising when there's a Star Wars movie coming out and there's little to no hype surrounding it. All the other Star Wars films felt like they were these big event movies that you had to see as soon as possible. But with this one, it seems like there's a lot more trepidation than anticipation. You probably heard that Phil Lord and Chris Miller of the Lego Movie were originally attached to direct the movie, and even got as far as filming most of the movie before they were booted from the production and subsequently replaced with Ron Howard. Supposedly because they were making something that was more akin to Spacefalls by way of Ace Ventura. Yeah, I don't care what anyone says, I'm kinda glad they got the boots. As much as I like Lord and Miller and I think they're very capable filmmakers, they were not suited to a Star Wars movie. Period. And on top of that, the film's coming out just six months after The Last Jedi, which although I really enjoyed, it's quite clear a lot of people didn't enjoy that film. Of course, the group of Disney Star Wars detractors has always existed from day one, but the general and, in my opinion, undeserved dislike of that movie really fractured the fan base in a big way. And as such, Solo really has its work cut out for it. They've had to remake the movie from the ground up so the budget was likely a lot higher than it initially was. It's coming out in the heels of a very divisive movie that a lot of people liked and a lot of people didn't. There's plenty of people that have flat out stated that they do not want to see this movie. And on top of that, it's also coming off the heels of Infinity War and Deadpool 2. Yeah, this movie has a lot to live up to. But I didn't have super high expectations for Solo going in. I wasn't expecting a big masterpiece, I was just kind of expecting a fun little heist movie. Something akin to Ant-Man or Suicide Squad. And that's pretty much what I got. It's very small scale and feels very standalone when compared to some of the other Star Wars films. And I think that approach does work to the movie's benefits. It doesn't feel weighed down by the franchise's mythology, and it has enough time to just be a fun standalone adventure story. And on a technical level, the film is mostly solid. The visuals and production design are pretty impressive. The CGI is of a high standard and doesn't have that overly animated look of the prequels. There's plenty of shootouts, chases and space battles to keep you entertained, and the interactions between the characters throughout these sequences did get a bit of a chuckle out of me. I also really enjoyed the cast for the most part. Alden Eidenreich definitely had a lot to live up to having to replace Harrison Ford as Han Solo, and I think this is definitely one of the things most people are having an issue with, but all in all, I think he does a pretty good job in the parts. He's playing this younger and more naive version of the character, although there is a few moments where he does show off that snide, cocky side that Ford would have shown in the role, and most of the time he does pull it off. And I also really enjoyed the relationship between him and Chewbacca, I thought it was very sweet, I thought the two had great chemistry, and it's nice to see Chewbacca actually get a big part in the Star Wars films, especially after how underused he was in The Last Jedi. Woody Harrelson is also fantastic as Solo's mentor Beckett. I like the dynamic between the two and the dialogue the two share is very good, especially in the scene where Becca tells Solo not to trust anyone, he's very much a reflection of the Han Solo that we'd come to see in the original trilogy and even The Force Awakens. He's self-motivated, cynical, and he only seems to be interested in money when in actuality he's in serious debt with these gangsters. Much like a Han Solo would end up being in debt to Jabba the Hutts. Amelia Clark was okay as Kira. she wasn't bad or anything, but I think she was probably the weakest out of the cast. I just wasn't that terribly invested in the relationship between her and Han, it just didn't really work for me. Although Donald 
Glover is another standout in the role of Lando. He manages to nail that sort of cocky, snarky personality very well. He's very charming and charismatic, and he has good chemistry with Eichenreich. Especially in his introduction, where he's seen playing some kind of a poker game, and the back and forth between the two in the scene is genuinely quite witty. It's just a pity that some of the characters in this film are really, really annoying. Case in point, L337, which is a shame because I do tend to really enjoy the droid characters in the Star Wars films, like the C-3PO, R2-D2, or BB-8, or even KS-20 from Rogue One. And I like the concept of this character, she's meant to be this very free-spirited and outspoken droid, and it's very clear throughout the film that she doesn't particularly like being Lando's assistant or seeing other droids being treated like slaves ostensibly, and it's in those scenes where it works, her bickering with Lando is actually quite humorous. But when she tries to be this big social justice droid and tries to fight for droid rights. Ugh, it's so cringeworthy. It's Star Wars being political and I'm usually okay with that, but it's done in the most risible and heavy-handed way you could possibly think of. The character just feels like a complete self party It feels like the remnants of Lord and Miller's earlier version of the film, because her character just feels completely out of place with what else is happening in the film. And I know a lot of people have said we don't really need a Han Solo movie, but I think with a Han Solo solo movie, there are actually a couple of opportunities to see what you could do with the character. For example, there's a few scenes early on where we see Han in the Galactic Empire, and that could have been used to sort of show Han transformation from this very naive and idealistic young man into the very cynical and jaded smuggler that we all know and love. But they just gloss over it with a three year time jump and there's a really stupid scene here as well where we actually find out the origin of Solo's name. It's just one of those moments where I was just sitting there thinking do we really need to know that? There's also quite a lot of callbacks to previous Star Wars movies. Of course, since this is Han Solo we're talking about, yes, they do reference the famous Kessel Run in 12 Parsecs line, and there's more than a few references here and there to the original trilogy. There's a lot of fan service in this film, and I know a lot of people criticise The Force Awakens for that as well, but in that film, at least the callbacks and references felt like they were done with affection. At least it felt like there was a genuine enthusiasm, whereas here, it just feels more like, do you remember this? bit in Star Wars? Do you remember this bit in Star Wars? Do you remember that scene? Do you remember that line? It all feels a bit calculated, which for a Star Wars film, I could describe Star Wars movies in a lot of ways, even the Disney films. Calculated is not a word I would use to describe them. And what doesn't help the movie is that its plot feels really predictable. It tries to keep you on your toes and tries to throw all these plot twists at you, but you can see them coming from the farthest reaches of the galaxy. They're really predictable. Especially some of the twists towards the end of the film, the only big reveal that actually did kind of surprise me was one towards the end, and I admit it was pretty cool to see that, but that's really about it. That's the only real surprise in the film. And there's a few moments of writing that just felt very contrived. Like when Han Solo finally meets Kira after several years trying to get back to her, he just happens to meet her on Dryden Voice's ship. It's moments like that that just feel really coincidental and contrived to the point that they just stick out like a sore thumb. But in the end, Solo Star Wars story is okay, I guess. It passes the time, it's not a particularly offensive film, and it's certainly not the worst Star Wars film as far as I'm concerned. Attack of the Clones is the worst out of the official films in the series. It does have some entertaining characters, humour and action, which is pretty much what I was hoping for and the things I like about it do just about outshine the things I don't like so much about it. But it feels very slight. It doesn't leave you with a lasting impression. And say what you will about all the other Star Wars films, even the prequels, even the sequels, even Rogue One, at least they leave you with something. At least they leave you with a strong feeling, whether it be a positive one or a negative one. They do stick with you in one way or another, but this film just feels very unremarkable, very insignificant, very minor in the long run. Not helped by its overlong running time or its thin and predictable story. So with that being said, I'm gonna give Solo a Star Wars story a light 6 out of 10. <sighs> Would I recommend seeing it? Eh, it depends. If, like me, you're just looking for a fun little adventure movie, I'd say go see it. You might enjoy it. But if you're one of those people that was dead set against this movie from day one, my opinion certainly won't change your mind. I do think it's the weakest of the Disney Star Wars films, but it's still not that bad. It's okay for what it is. But frankly, for a Star Wars film, that's just not good enough. So Solo, a Star Wars story, have you seen it yet? If so, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? 
let me know down in the comments below. I'll certainly be interested to see what people think of this movie because so far the reaction from this film has been quite mixed. There's a lot of people that do quite like it but there's also a lot of people that don't particularly like it so just your typical Disney Star Wars movie I guess. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video regardless of my opinion on this movie and if you enjoyed what you saw feel free to like the video, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe to my channel while you're at it and if you want to follow me on social media contact me via email or support me on Patreon links below down in the description and until next time I'm Danny Quinn, may the force be with you.